To make the lights for our police car, we have to come to a place like this. An emergency warning lights factory. Before emergency warning lights are made, they have to be designed using a computer program. Once the computer has the right design, it creates a list of parts needed to make the lights. And that gets sent to this, an electronic handset. And on the screen, it tells us where they're kept in this massive storeroom. So, what do we need? We need lots of little lights called LED lights. And these do all of the flashing. And then we need a circuit board. And a circuit board controls when and how often the lights flash. And to connect the lights to the circuit board, we need lots of colourful cables. And then we're going to need some of these. These are called lenses. They act a little bit like a lid for the lights. And finally, to put everything together, we need lots and lots of screws. First, the base is cut out from a sheet of metal called aluminium. This is then put with all of the parts onto a mini tray until it reaches the workstation. And this is where the emergency warning light is put together. And this is Mick. He's going to be making one for us today. First, Mick gets the base ready and starts to assemble the parts. Next, Mick screws all of the LED flashing lights into the right place using something called a pneumatic screwdriver. <laughs> Can you hear the sound of the pneumatic screwdriver? What do you think it sounds like? <laughs> I think it sounds angry. <laughs> it's time for Mick to wire all the LED lights, but there is a lot of wiring to be done and it can take a long time. So I'm going to use my special camera to film something called a time lapse. And that means when we watch this back, we can see things happening a lot quicker. different cables to put in. I think they look a bit like colourful spaghetti. Wasn't that brilliant? Now all the cables are in place, it's time to plug in the circuit boards. A circuit board is like a mini computer and it sends a message to the LED lights to tell them when to flash. And they're connected <coughs> by these wires. <coughs> Mick has given me special permission to help him plug one of the wires in. We're nearly finished. Just need to put the lenses on the top, like a lid. Last workstation is really important because it's where the emergency warning lights are tested to make sure they're working properly. Ready, Mick? Here we go. Look, they're working. Oh, they look great, don't they? What colours can you see? There's blue. Red. And white. Thank you. Right, let's get this fixed onto the top of our police car. The lights have to be screwed in place and then wired into the police car's electrics. In total, it takes about seven hours. And there you have it, a finished police car with brand new emergency warning lights. And I've got special permission to switch them on. Wow, looks like everything's working properly. Don't they look brilliant? A car wash is like a giant robot. It's an automated machine and that means it's controlled by a computer. How amazing is that? The 
motor controls a big brain that moves along tracks to clean the whole car. Before we take this dirty car for a clean, I think we need a closer look. The computer in the car wash can tell where the car is by using special sensors called photocells. They're a bit like the car wash's eyes. The sensor sends an invisible beam of light called infrared from one side of the car wash to the other. When the car drives into the right position, it breaks the beam. The sensor sends a message to the computer and the red light tells the driver to stop. The computer switches on the washer and moves it down the tracks until it reaches the place where the car broke the beam. The jet sprays out soap and water. The brushes have different sensors inside, too. They tell the computer when the brushes are pushing against the car. A drying machine moves over the car in exactly the same way as the brushes, because the computer has memorised the shape of the car. When the car is dry, the computer changes the red stoplight to a green light, and the clean car is ready to be driven away. It's really clever, isn't it? I'm just setting up these special waterproof cameras so that we can see the car wash working. OK, the sensor must know I'm in the right place because the light has turned red. Whoa, look at that! Here comes the soap! Look on my special cameras. You can see the soap pouring down. It looks a bit like a curtain. Oh, here comes the water. Can you see on my special cameras how the water is being sprayed? It's through little jets. Wow! It's a bit like the shower you have at home, but this is spraying the water at a really high pressure, which means it's a lot more powerful. Listen to the sound! That is the sound of the water! That's really exciting! Ooh, now it's time for the brushes. The giant brushes are coming down and then the sensor will tell them where the car is so it knows where to stop. Here we go again! Woohoo! The brushes are made from a soft foam so that the paint on the car doesn't get scratched when it's being washed. Here we go again! That is such a brilliant sound. It's like being in a thunderstorm. There's one more thing we have to do before cleaning the car is finished. What do you have to do after you've had a bath or a shower? That's right, you have to get dry. This is like being under a giant hairdryer. These fans blow air through nozzles to push the water off the car to make sure it's dry. And that's it. The car is clean and shiny. That was brilliant! This is a metal workshop. And here they make lots of different types of gates. A gate starts out like this, as long pieces of metal called steel. This is Adrian, and he's a blacksmith, which means he makes things using metal. And first, Adrian picks the pieces of steel he's going to use, and then the pieces need to be cut so they're the right size. Workshops and tools can be very dangerous, so you should never go near them without a grown up. To cut the steel, Adrian is using a big machine called a bandsaw. And can you see the really sharp teeth here? 
It's these teeth that will cut through the metal. But what do you think the bandsaw looks like? I think it looks like the wide open mouth of a crocodile. As the blade cuts through the steel, it gets quite hot. This is because of something called friction, which happens when two surfaces are rubbed together. It's a bit like rubbing your hands together. Give it a go. Can you feel them getting warmer? When the blade cuts against the metal, the friction makes the blade hot. So there's some water being poured over the blade to cool it down. For our gate, Adrian cuts four metal bars for the frame and seven rods for the middle. Next, he needs to put holes into the steel, ready for the hinges. For this, he's using a punching machine. Did you hear that loud clunking sound? <laughs> It's like a giant paper hole punch, only this one is much more powerful. Our gate is going to have a curved top, but steel is strong. So we're going to need a very strong tool to bend it with. It's called a ring roller. Now, He's turning a screw, and that puts pressure on the metal. Next, he's turning a lever, and that moves the straight piece of metal backwards and forwards. And slowly, the metal starts to bend. Looks like a big smile, doesn't it? Our gate now has a curved top and some holes for the bolts. It's really starting to look like a gate, isn't it? But here comes the exciting bit, fixing everything together. And to stick all the bits of steel together, Adrian is going to use this welding machine. And it works by heating up small pieces of wire till they're so hot that they melt and act a little bit like glue. Welding creates lots of bright sparks, so we have to wear a welding coat to protect our clothes and a mask. To protect our eyes. Wow, did you see all of the sparks? They looked like little fireworks, didn't they? But those sparks are really, really hot. But to show you just how hot the steel gets, I've got my special camera here. And this is a thermal camera. Now, cold things appear blue, but warm and hot things look yellow or red. But very, very hot things, they look white. So what color do you think the sparks are going to be? Let's find out. Wow! Look at that! Where Adrian has been welding, the gate is red and bright white, but everything else is blue. That's because where the steel has been heated, it's much, much hotter. Adrian is creating a swirly pattern for the gate using a set of scrolling tools. These can bend steel into different shapes. I think it looks a bit like a snail. All that's left to do is weld the swirls into position and fix on the bolts. Ta-da! And here we have our finished gate. All that's left to do is hang this on some hinges and it'll be ready to get used in someone's garden. Some of the materials we need to make concrete come from here, a quarry. A quarry is a place where rocks, sand and other materials can be dug out of the ground. And this one is massive. Quarries can be dangerous. You should never go into one without a grown-up. 
but I've been given special permission to be here today. This is gravel and there is lots of it here. It's like being on a gravel mountain. Gravel is the main ingredient we need to make concrete. Gravel is made up of thousands of tiny pieces of rock found underground. The next ingredient is sand. And this sand is just like the sand you might find on a beach to make sandcastles with. The gravel and sand are dug out of the ground in the quarry by a big digger, then scooped into the back of a dumper truck. The dumper truck pours it all into a tank called a hopper. The sand and the gravel fall out of the hopper onto this, a conveyor belt. I wonder where all the sand and the gravel goes. Well, I've got my special camera with me so we can find out. The conveyor belt moves pretty fast, so I wonder if we can make it to the end before the camera does. I've got another special camera with me, so I can bring you along to see if we can make it first. Wow, it really does move quickly. Let's see if we can catch the special camera. Can you see it? <laughs> Over there. Are we going to make it to the end before the special camera? I don't know. Ah, it's beaten us. The sand and gravel falls through a tunnel underneath my feet and comes out here where it then travels on a conveyor belt up to that enormous machine. And inside there, it falls onto a sieve. The sieve works so that the small pieces of sand fall through the hole and the bigger pieces of gravel are trapped on top. Look, there's the sand falling from the big sieve and there's the gravel. But there's one more main ingredient we need to make concrete. It's this grey powder. It's called cement. It's important not to get cement on your skin or in your eyes, so I'm wearing special gloves and glasses today. But when you add water to cement, it acts a little bit like a glue, so that when it dries, it hardens, and that holds all of the sand and gravel together, so it's really strong. And this is where all the ingredients come together. This entire building is one set of scales. And all of our dry ingredients go inside it to be weighed. It's a little bit like weighing the ingredients for a huge cake. Once the ingredients have been weighed, they travel along conveyor belts and pipes to the front of the building. And can you see those tanks there? That's where the water is stored. The water will help bind all the ingredients together. Wow. And they fall through this chute. But what do you think they fall into? That's right. It's a concrete mixing lorry. And here it comes now. Can you hear that grinding noise? That's the sound of all of the ingredients being mixed together inside the spinning drum. And it will keep on spinning and making that noise as it travels to a building site. I'm going to ride on the mixing lorry to take the concrete to the building site. By the time it gets there, the concrete is ready to pour to help build a new road. Craig's using a chute so that he can pour the concrete exactly where the builders need it. And to pour it, Craig needs to stop the drum and spin it in the opposite direction. Oh, here it comes! It's like it's going down a slide. 
the dry ingredients in the water have mixed together so the concrete is slushy and that makes it easier to pour out and spread. But as soon as it dries, it will go hard and be really strong. 